I'm Dan Kelly. I'm a member of the Wisconsin Supreme Court. I'm here for the Equal Access to Justice Conference this morning, and it's my privilege and my honor uh, to give some welcome, welcoming remarks uh, to the folks who are uh, working on this issue. So, um, so I had an opportunity uh, this morning to, uh, to recount why I think this is um, so crucially important, what they're doing. And um, I think the, the, the way that I have um, experienced this issue has changed over the years. Um, I've seen it as a practitioner and now being on the court. Uh, I believe that I have a more full picture of why this is so important. When I was in practice, um, we, uh, we um, did pro se, uh, did pro bono uh, representations from time to time. Um, shortly before I came to the court, uh, the, uh, the S Supreme Court had uh, granted a petition for review uh, from a pro se litigant, and I was asked to represent that individual on a pro bono basis before the Supreme Court. And I was happy to accept that appointment because, uh, on one level at least, it gave me another opportunity to argue before the High Court. Um, but on, on another level, this is about helping individuals who find themselves in need. The law can be an extraordinarily complex thing. Um, in fact, so complex that sometimes when the court addresses uh, what the law requires of an individual, uh, we sometimes conclude the statute um, is ambiguous. What that means is that um, reasonably intelligent and informed uh, individuals could come to different conclusions on what the law requires. And if members of the bar, and if members of the bench, can come to different conclusions on what the law requires, um, I can't imagine how difficult it might be for an individual who faces the complexity of the law without anyone there to help, without a legal background, without anyone to explain what the law requires or how they might be able to navigate that thicket. So on the, uh, uh, when I was practicing, uh, I saw it from that perspective. This individual needed, uh, needed help uh, to navigate those waters and, uh, and providing, providing that assistance is part of what it means uh, to be a member of the bar, to be a part of a profession that has as its chief goal uh, the preservation of justice and the rights and liberties of the people of the state. But now that I'm on the bench, I see it from a different perspective, and I think I have a, a more complete view of uh, the importance of these issues. So now I see it from the perspective of the need for the courts um, to have good representation on both sides, to protect the integrity and the development of the law and to ensure that the institution of the law uh, remains strong and firm. Um, when we have only one side represented, sometimes perhaps neither side represented, the burden on the court is to still try to figure out what the law requires. And when there's a mismatch uh, between the parties uh, in their ability to explain their positions from a legal perspective, what does statute require, what do the cases say, what do the administrative, administrative regulations require, um, the result could be less than complete justice. So we really, uh, so we need to have that competent representation on both sides uh, for the sake of the institution of the court and for the sake of the institution of the law. Uh, if we don't have that, both could suffer. And the consequences of that suffering is not limited to the bench or the bar. Um, that affects society at large. So if we, uh, if we become a society in which people cannot adequately figure out what the law requires of them, that decreases the amount of fr freedom and liberty that we enjoy. And so um, as, I, uh, as I consider the work that this conference is doing, I am extraordinarily grateful uh, to them for that on both levels. Uh, one, uh, their service to the individuals in need. Um, but also uh, their service uh, to the institutions of the courts and of the law uh, in a way that will strengthen society and allow us to live peacefully and prosperously together.